You're listening to The Building Code. I'm Tom Houghton. I'm Paul Worth. And joining us on our episode today, we're going to take a behind the scenes look at two chicks and a hammer, and we'll dive into that in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about an exciting opportunity we have called Builder Trend University On The Road. We're calling it BTU On The Road for short. This will be taking place in Dallas, Texas on October 3rd, 2019. It's a one day event for you and your team to learn more and how to optimize your usage of Builder Trend. So make sure you sign up for Builder Trend University if you want to continue to grow your business. We have Tad Starziak joining us. He's the project manager over there at Two Chicks and a Hammer. Welcome, Tad. Well, hey, guys. Uh, so glad to be here. I'm really excited to talk to you guys. Uh, just attended your Builder Trend University, so I'm still pumped and jazzed about it. I think we're going to have a pretty good conversation. Yes, we are. Now, you said behind the scenes. What does that even mean? What are you talking about? Well, we're going to talk about the show. But the, the show, the they're show tied on with Good Bones. There, yeah, Good Bones is a show. So <laughs> yep, Good Bones is uh, the HGTV show um, that we work on. Um, we're currently in our fifth season. Um, it's wild to think that much time has passed, and as we've grown, uh, it's been more and more important that we uh, mainstream the things that we're uh, doing construction wise and keeping track of information. And that's when you guys came into our life like a year and a half ago. Boom. So and to, it's been exciting ever since. <laughs> there you go. Tom, everybody knows Tom. Tom was in Hollywood for for a time. Worked for a movie company. So, like, what? Oh. Would it, enter Builder Trend. Is that like an like a script kind of thing? Yeah, script note. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Enter Builder, enter Builder Trend. Trend. In the third act. Yeah. Smash cut two. There. That's that's what you wanted. Very nice. So Good Bones is a TV show on HGTV. Full full disclosure, I've I've never seen it, but when I told my wife and and other uh, individuals here at Builder Trend, big fans. Yeah. Big fans. Big following here. Yeah. The the show has really done well. Um, You know, the dynamic duo that it stars is my sister, Mina, um, who's a 5'2", fiery, redhead. Um, takes no nonsense, deals out justice left and right. And uh, her mom, Karen, um, who's a very free soul, very hippie energy, um, and kind of counteracts Mina's uh, somewhat normal taste with some wild, uh, crazy taste. And there are also two women who just dominate in construction. They know how to do so much. And uh, I think the reason why people love the show so much is because you see the women doing the work. Um, and women are loving that and it's great to see them empowered by it. So that's Respect. awesome. I'm sold. Yeah. I'm going to start watching it. Now. You better start watching it. Yeah. It's are, good. Do you make it? Appear- it is really good. Do you make an appearance, Ted? Yeah. So, um, I actually, uh, started doing demolition for me and Karen in eighth grade. Uh, I was like a football player and I was ready to go into freshman year and she's like, you want to make some side money? You know, like $10 so, an hour. So yeah, totally do. Mm-hmm. So um, started doing demolition for in eighth grade, did it throughout high school. The show hadn't started yet. Um, and then, yeah, about my freshman year of college, uh, the show got going. Okay. So let's talk about your role in the company. You're a project manager yeah. there. Um, yes. I am curious. about. I want to know more about Bobcat, though. And why? Hey, do Bobcat, you have a nickname, yeah. too? Um, so no, I don't really have a nickname. Um, Bobcat originated from the first episode we did for season one. Um, it was a house off Barth. And, uh, the thing about Bobcat is he's like six, three and his shoulders are just immensely wide. He's a huge human being. And, uh, usually it goes like, I try to get something, uh, and I, if I can't get it, like rip it off. Um, then Austin will try and Austin, like he's got like bear claws so he just rips everything off. So he's, he's like a piece of equipment himself. Um, and just whatever I can't really tear off, he, he for sure can. So uh, he's, he started demoing with me in high school, and it was just evident that he needed to be a part of the show too because uh, he rocks it out for us. And he's, he like lifts uh, washers and dryers up and dishwashers just by himself and casually walks them out. It's like, whoa, dude, that's wild. This is Austin is Bobcat. Austin Bobcat is Austin. Yes, Austin, Austin yeah. is Bobcat. Bobcat is Austin. Wow. Yeah. Austin. It's I his alter it's his alter ego during demo. Nice. You know, so not for nothing. I don't know Hollywood. Tom this is Tom's game, but you should have a nickname because everybody yeah. should have a good nickname on TV. Like Bobcat. I, I think you're right. Well we should talk maybe about your going because your name is Tad, but your real right. your full name is It's Thaddeus. Thaddeus. Yeah. yeah, Thaddeus. We um, could we could do something with that. Yeah. 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 
there, there's for sure something there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, most people know me as Tad because um, that's what my name was on the show. But uh, people who have met me post high school call me Thaddeus. There you go. Right on. So the show is Good Bones. It's on HGTV. You're, the company is named Two Chicks and a Hammer. Correct. Yeah. So um, they started their business, called it Two Chicks and a Hammer, and then our pilot episode aired as Two Chicks and a Hammer. Um, but somebody, it was either the production company or HGTV themselves, wanted to buy the name, um, and we didn't want to sell the name. Uh, so then um, we ended up settling on the name good bones um which has really done well for us and people like it a lot so uh, and now fifth season of good bones and a lot of people know it how does one get themselves an hgtv show right so what happens it's actually not so much you yourself getting there it's almost more of them coming to find you um so hgtv basically tells production companies hey uh we're looking for this kind of talent and then those production companies, they go out and search for that talent. So High Noon Entertainment, who produces Good Bones, they produce Fixer Upper, they do the Boysy Boys. Um, they got their hands in a lot of home renovation shows. They actually reached out to Mina. And at first, Mina thought it was a scam. Like, this is, this is nonsense. You know, they're just trying to get something. Uh, but then the president of High Noon actually gave her a call. It was legit. They did Skype interviews. They gave us a GoPro. We've uh, made a sizzle video. Um, that's where I got to come into play. I made all these crazy vines of me doing demo and like we throw like a window up and then I chuck a hammer at it and like break everything. And uh, that made it to the sizzle. And then after the sizzle, they said, let's do a pilot episode. Um, and then the pilot episode did really well. And then it was season one. And now it's, it's season five and it's just, it's crazy how time has flown by and all the opportunities that have come out of it. That's incredible. I guess I need to get a clarifying question in here too. So we know about the two chicks. So does that make you the hammer? Are you the hammer here? Um, I would for sure say I'm the hammer. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nick yep. Nickname. Uh, the hammer. That's that, your the nickname. Hammer. There you go. That is a good nickname. See? I want to cut. That's a good nickname. It's true. I'll take you heard, that. You all heard day it first. Long. Yeah. Yeah. It's heard good. it first here. Heard it first here. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Let's start with just like a background of the company. I, we kind yeah. of been dancing around, but I kind of want to try to formalize it up here a little bit. So can you give us a background on Two Chicks and a Hammer and then also just kind of tell about how the team's grown? Because obviously it's more than yeah. just uh, Mina and Karen. Two Chicks so, and So uh, Two yeah. Chicks and a Hammer began back in 2007 with Mina and Karen. Uh, Mina graduated with her general studies degree, uh, didn't know what she wanted to do. She renovated a home, found out she really liked it. Uh, they did one or two homes a year till about 2012, 2013. Uh, and the business model that really came out for Two Chicks and a Hammer um, was rehabbing, or not rehabbing, revitalizing our neighborhoods. So we don't really go further than like 10 minutes outside of where we currently live, which is um, about five minutes south of downtown Indianapolis. Uh, so we really stay in our neighborhoods and, you know, obviously we have to make a profit on these houses, but the margin of profit isn't great because we're more concerned about making this a beautiful area again and having beautiful people, um, move in to the area. Uh, and so with that, you know, you have the show that starts and then we're doing 10 houses instead of doing like one or two, we're now doing 10 and the company had to grow quickly. Uh, it's been messy. Um, and you know, that, that brings us back to, to you guys, uh, like a year and a half ago as a project manager, I got introduced to builder trend. Um, and at first, you know, it was kind of this resistance to change, um, you know, worried about how it was going to affect my process and such. Um, but now like I couldn't be more thankful for it. Um, builder trend is so immersive. I feel like it's like another world. It's like a Narnia or a middle earth. Like <laughs> there's so much to explore in that stuff. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing, it, it's like a CYA for me. Um, so when my sister, who's, like I said, 5'2", fiery redhead, comes at me, it's like, nope, check my daily log. Look, this is what I tagged. There are workers on this site X amount of days. Look, I just pulled that report. Like, I'm winning. And I stay winning because of uh, Builder Trend, That's which good. is, it's, it's really helpful. And, um, you know, we're still... You know, even a year and a half later, we're still learning and there's so much uh, more to learn. And yeah, it's, it's an incredible project managing software. Really glad we use it. 
That's great. That's Stay awesome. winning. Stay winning. Nope. Check the Stay daily winning. Log. Yeah, I, I like that yeah. too. Yeah, check the daily log. That's going on our website. That nope. is. Like my favorite is to like send her an email, be like, per my daily log. Nice. You know? Yes. Like go go check it out. Very subtly. <laughs> Sneak that in there. I like that. Yeah. So what is the premise of the show? Do you pick a project, obviously remodel it and like So we what, we yeah. pick the nastiest, most disgusting houses in the area. Mm. Um Probably about 60 to 70% of the houses we buy, we haven't even seen them yet. Um, they're just the cheapest ones, which usually means that uh, the foundations are completely rotted, uh, lots of dead animals. Um, the most famous thing that's in every one of our houses is some sort of poop, whether it's animal yeah, nice. or human. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a running joke where we say we, we like our houses to have had a fire in them because it kind of burns some of the poo away because there's so much of it. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's an interesting so, problem to have there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. It, it's crazy. But yeah, <laughs> we, we, take, we take the worst of the worst houses in our area um, and we make them the most beautiful. And like Karen says, you know, when we get into these houses, they're like really sad homes. You can feel like the energy of the house and it's like, oh, this, is, this sucks that I'm this now. And then after a few months, you can really feel the uptick and the energy in the place. And it's like, wow, this place is going to be uh, somewhere that a family is going to move in and they're going to have really great experiences and, you know, they're going to go through things together and, you know, have a happy life in our homes that we built. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Jinx. No, oh, don't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> too many podcasts together yeah. but so all these things have like conflict right or like there's like this imaginary clock they have to they have to like what what's the conflict or like the, the, the drama crush, the, yeah what's the drama in, in your well show? yeah the, so the drama is really you know for because it's tv you have to make some totally. of that drama right yeah, we get, we get it. um so we have like real problems right like the foundation um usually our problems arise from things that we didn't see so it's not like we really are creating the drama you know like we don't set something up but it's like finding out that the foundation is much worse than it was before you know and then because the areas that we're building homes in um are just now being pioneered there's not a lot of money to be made and our profit margin is really small so uh you know the the drama per se would be finding all these issues and figuring out how it's going to work with our ability to make a profit and, you know, are we going to lose money? Mm -hmm. Um, that, that I'd say is a drama. And then like, you know, we do crazy stuff. Like Karen almost had like a 600 pound piano fall on her and I had to like dive underneath and grab it. We is that found for real? Snakes. Yeah, oh, it was, God. it was, yeah, it was like one of those, um, just, I don't know, like dad strength. I'm not like a dad, but it was like the piano was about to fall on uh, my sister's mom and kind of like my mom. My mom passed when I was younger and Karen uh, took me in for a few years. So it's like a piano is about to fall on her. It was legit 600 pounds. It was the heaviest thing I've ever moved in my life. And I like caught it and it was just like, it was crazy. So much adrenaline. What episode so was that? Season. Um, that was season three. Austin, do you know what episode from season three all it was with... Now, to be clear, that's Bobcat he's asking. Yeah, that's Bobcat. That's a yeah, we're, we're not, not even sure, man. We'll show no notes. Season three, and we'll, though. We'll put like a special we'll appearance show by, by Bobcat yeah. in the description. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? In the description of the podcast? Yeah. Bobcat, Bobcat just wanted to get on the podcast. Right, yeah. exactly. It sounds like you got Same. a really good team there. Um, and it sounds like you guys are doing a lot for the community. Uh, maybe we could talk briefly about just kind of your impact that you've had there in your local community a little bit more. Um, and maybe yeah. kind of how that sets you apart from other builders, maybe in the area. Yeah. So um, in the Indianapolis area right now is booming um, with revitalization, new homes being built, uh, rehabs. Uh, so to date, we've done about... 70 to 80 homes in Fountain Square, Bates Hendricks, and the old South Side. Uh, those neighborhoods are within uh, half a mile of each other. They're not very big. It's usually a main street and then side streets. Um, so what, what makes this different is there's a lot of people who have moved in to do construction as investors. So you're getting people from California and Florida who are coming in to rehab these homes and then the money that they make off of it isn't coming back to our Indianapolis community. It's going back to California or Florida or somewhere else. So the really cool thing is, you know, we're established in Indianapolis. Our business model is we care about our neighborhood. And constantly we're using uh, local artists um, 
you know, local welders. Everything we do really stays local. Our T-shirts are made by the indie shop. Um, you know, so we, that money gets poured back into the community. It stays here in Indianapolis. Um, and it, it, I think people would say it just feels very wholesome. We're not out just to make a buck. We're out actually to, like, make a difference. That's awesome. Have you ever been to Indianapolis? I have not, actually. You haven't? But it's on my list now. It's great. Downtown. I'm actually super cool. I'm one of the proudest Hoosiers there, there are. Like, I, I love Indianapolis. So some fun facts about Indianapolis. Let's do it. We have uh, the second most monuments to Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, downtown, we have the Circle Center Monument. Um, it is only nine feet shorter than the Statue of Liberty. That's another cool thing. We have the seventh largest city park. It's called Eagle Creek Park. Um, it used to be privately owned, but now it's just owned by the state. Um, and it's an incredible place. There's a whole bunch of native, uh, animals that come back there that they don't go back to anywhere else in Indiana because it's not preserved anymore. And then, you know, the Colts, we got the Colts, you know, we yeah. had Peyton Manning. But. And the Indianapolis 500. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh fail. Come on. Why did fail? Sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm embarrassed. That's a tough I beat love the Indy 500. Yeah, no one should beat. see me at the Indy 500 though. It's like I go Party. full Indiana mode. Um, I wear shorts, you know, so some cut off hmm. jean shorts. I wear boots, like a bandana. Um, and it's like go time. Like when the planes fly over and they're singing the Star Spangled Banner, it's just like this woo America moment. Yeah. <laughs> America. It, it, and there's like 400,000 people there. So that's crazy. It's awesome. Yeah, that's we'll have to it's, check that it's, out. Co- it's a cool place. Also, what's the what's the steakhouse downtown like St. Elmo's Fire or something? Yeah, St. Elmo's Steakhouse. Okay, so we're kind of friends already. Uh, yeah, can we're I definitely can friends. I come to Indianapolis, hang out with you, go to the bar and get free drinks, go to the Indianapolis 500 in your car and wear jean shorts? Dude, that can 100% happen. I just Party. can't guarantee you'll you'll make it back, you know. Yeah. Like, right. it, it might be a one-way trip. Wild. Okay. It gets so wild here. <laughs> Let's get in the book. I think this would be a great little YouTube series that we're going to do. Paul and Tom on the road. Yes. Paul and Tom on the road. We're going to stop by yes. in Indianapolis. You heard it first. Stay tuned. Watch our YouTube channel. <laughs> I love it's this. happening. Producer Brooke is panicking and we're shuffling <laughs> papers, but we'll make it happen. It's done. Yeah, it'll be a thing. Put it in the books. Um, yeah. Okay, let's talk about, I think a lot of our audience would like to hear kind of the behind the scenes of what you do. Yeah. I think the whole TV aspect of it fascinates people. Would you mind shedding some light on, you know, some of the biggest challenges you face because you're building on TV and for TV? Right. So the biggest challenge uh, we face for TV is the fact that for a season we'll have up to 13 to 15 episodes. So that means we have 13 houses we're usually taking down to the studs. So these are full fledged projects. This isn't like we're renovating a room here or there. It's the whole thing, fixing foundation, new mechanicals all the way through. So and that's a four to six month project all day long. And um, as anyone who would listen to this podcast knows, construction never goes the way you think it's going to go. So trying to accomplish getting 13 to 15 houses done as quickly as possible. Uh, we try to get them done in seven months because like having the production team here uh, most of them are from out of town, so they live here in a hotel. Um, their food gets paid for. Their equipment gets rented by High Noon Production Company, uh, who we use. So, like, they're spending a massive amount of money each week just to have these guys here. So it's really a fight against the clock. That's the biggest challenge. And when the cameras step in, usually construction slows down a little bit because there's things that they need to be able to do in order to, to capture some of the stuff. So. Sure. Extra challenges, it sounds like, on the job site. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, we're trying to film a footer scene and, you know, maybe at the front of the house, you know, they're sawing the siding or something like that. And it's too loud, you know, so they'll go up to those siding guys and be like, hey, can you guys stop working for like 10, 15 minutes? But uh, in the TV world, um, if you worked on a movie set, you probably know, like, yep. if anybody tells you it's 10 minutes, it yep. really means like it's 30 to 45. Yep. So, like, if I have a call time where they're like, hey, you need to be at this house at 10 a.m., I know to be there at like 10.30 to 10.45 and I'm still good. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> have extra padding. It's I want to talk about your builder trend experience a little yeah. bit too. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I know that you talked off air about this, that you really enjoyed the builder build trend experience in terms of just using the software. Obviously, you came to BTU, you shared that as well. I want to know more about kind of a, your usage of it 
What do you guys get out of it? What's your favorite feature? Yeah, so um, when we first got, I'm going to try to remember chronologically uh, how I got used to Builder Trend. Um, So the first thing I noticed is like you can have a a bunch of projects at once. You know, you can have a list of like, for example, our 13 houses, you know, and in that, I think the first thing that we went to was the scheduling uh, ability. You can do so much with the schedule. You can shift it. You can set a baseline. You can create phases. Uh, you can create tags. You can create to-dos based off of that. Um, so for, for maybe some of the listeners who uh, aren't incredibly knowledgeable on the schedule aspect, you know, for example, um, when mechanicals get done, you know, that triggers uh, the second draw for our contractor. So I can create a to-do and assign that to mechanicals finished. And I can set a reminder to remind me five days before so I know that payment's coming up. Um, so the schedule has been immensely helpful. Um, the ability to shift, keep track of days where uh, they've missed, days that they've been on, using the filter option. Um, so schedule, favorite. Uh, second favorite is my CYA, is the daily logs. So I can timestamp. Um, my sister, when I first started project managing, um, understandably like required me to drop my location when I did a daily log because uh, she didn't always trust I would be there. So, you know, you can drop the location, you can attach the weather. And I think the most useful thing for us is we have very hard timelines where we have an end date that has to be met. So the ability to uh, put a tag in there where it says, like, no workers on site, you know, so the contractor comes back and says, well, hey, you know, we we busted our butts, Um, you know, we're still going to miss our end date. You know, I can look back and be like, I can go through my tags and type in bad weather. Okay, we had 14 days of bad weather where it rained and you couldn't do what you needed to do. Oh, well, you also had like a month and a half of no workers on site. You know, so I hear you, but the data doesn't reflect that you guys actually busted butts to get it done. Mm -hmm. Nice. Using tags is great. Yeah. And uh, you can take pictures. For example, we actually had one of our houses fall down. The contractor mm. did not brace the house, um, which is crazy. And, um, you know, but I go in there, you know, I take pictures of the house every day for progress. Um, you know, so he said he braced it. And I had pictures of it not being braced. So Boom. nice try, buddy. Nice try. And, and Got you know, that saved us a lot of money because Builder Trend let me put in a daily log with a picture, mm-hmm. you know? So and it's, it's easy. I go to the job site. So for other project managers, you know, go to the job site, check out your job site, do a quick walk around, check your comments, check your messages, address them, and then check your to-dos. If you have to-dos, take care of them, and then fill out your daily log. That's my process right there, you know? So I go to the job site, and it takes me about 10, 15 minutes and I have, I feel like I've conquered that job site for that first morning rotation of going to the job jobs. And then, you know, I'll come back in the afternoon and do the same thing. And it, it's a really good routine that works out. It really speeds things along. Like I used to have to do a daily report at the end of every day via email or I'd have to write it on paper. Mm-hmm. You know, now I have Builder Trend where all of that information's there. And it's just so great to just be able to be like, yeah, it's in there. It's in the comments. It's in the daily log. Yeah, so, and, yeah, and you're not having to wait at the to the end of the day. You're you're kind of doing it with your natural flow of your day, right? A hundred percent. That's and, really you know, cool. And even you know, there, there's times where I need to reach out to a contractor, but we have a contractor using Builder Trend, you know. So mm-hmm. um, we really have probably these past three months really started using it to be our main vein of conversation, where it's not so much uh, you know Gmail or, um, you know, calling or texting, um, because we use the messages in the comment section in builder trend. Yeah. We've got a great community of, of builder trend users in Indianapolis. You know, we had, uh, our friends from emergent on one of our first episodes of the podcast, yeah. you know, you know, the boys from emergent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we sure do. You guys we sure should, do. We, we should get all the Indianapolis. This is how we get there. This is it. This is it. This, this is, is part of the road yes. trip. Don't tell anybody, well, although it'll be recorded. On the it'll podcast. be on. Yeah. Uh, we get a user c- group there and we'll go buy people beers. Perfect. Or, okay. Yeah, there celebrity. we go. Our, our favorite contractor that we use for the majority of our houses, uh, DR Contractors, they actually just started using Builder Training. They were actually out there Let's go. in Nebraska with me. So Let's go. Um, we're winning people over over here. 
Respect. Let awesome. us know. We respect Spreading the that. good word of Builder Trend. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. That was hey, that was quite honestly that was a really good sort of like day in the life picture of Builder Trend is not this thing you have to do. Builder Trend is this thing that that take care of seven things you're already doing. Incorporate it into oh, your yeah. life organically instead of like just kind of trying to bolt it on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's incredible. Tom does our videos. Let's get Tad on video. That's what I'm saying. He's obviously he's a super cool guy, dude. Tad and Bobcat. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Tad and Bobcat, a yeah. series. It's yeah. He can, a mini series. He can he can be like he can be holding you while you're talking. Like, <laughs> oh, in, for sure. In air. Yeah. He, Just he bench could. pressing yeah. you in the yeah. background. Yeah. yeah. I, th uh, I think he could still do that. He yeah. probably could. Yeah. All right. This, this has been awesome. As one of the co stars of the Paul and Tom show, this I promise you. If you go on oh. our show, you can be yourself. Yeah, you can bring it. Yes. You can bring it. That's yeah. awesome. You can send it. Yeah. That's I'll embrace it. Send it. That's asking for a lot. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm quite the character. That's for sure. <laughs> well, we, we love your character. We're big fans. Big fans. We're going to get t shirts. That. I'm team. No, yeah. Team Tad. Don't tell, don't tell, yeah, don't tell Bobcat. Don't tell. Uh, no, but I'm I team won't, Tad. I won't. Yeah. Yeah. Until he listens we'll keep, to the podcast. The and then, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I might distract him during this part. Okay, you know? good. Yeah, there you so. go. We, uh, we've really enjoyed talking to you, Tad, and getting to know yeah. you and more about Two Chicks and a Hammer. Uh, well, obviously, we're going to put a lot of stuff in the show notes, so make sure you go there. <laughs> I don't know if we can handle. The show notes can't, can't, can't show. even handle us right now. Exactly. No, this, this is going to be a great podcast. This is, yeah. is going to be great. This was a great podcast. This what was. Talking about. Yeah, this was yeah. fun. So it was a great time. We gotta have we gotta have him on a, a recurring visitor. Sure, Talk, oh, I'm, talking with Tad, and, game. and maybe I'm we'll game. bring a little Bobcat in. Yeah, Tad next talks. time, called Tad, Tad talks. Tad talks with Bobcat. <laughs> with yes, special appearance by. Yeah. People yes. will be very confused by all of that, but listen, Not, listen, they'll they'll listen, listen to the whole listen thing. To the They're show. listening to it. They're no, getting it. When you listen to the show, you know it's true. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Tad, for joining us on the podcast today. We really appreciate your time. And again, sharing your experience with building and also with using Builder Trend as well. So thanks for being a part of this. Yeah, check out Good Bones on HGTV. Tuesday nights it's at awesome. 9 p.m. Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. <laughs> nice work, Tad. Boom. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to well, go Well, thank binge you guys watch. so much. Uh, appreciate this opportunity. Grateful that I got to talk to you guys. And uh, maybe, you know, we'll be talking again soon. For Definitely. Sure. We'll see you in Indianapolis. Yes. Come to the Indy 500. <laughs> All right. Done and done. All right. All right. All right thanks, Ted. Love what you heard? Don't forget to rate and subscribe to our podcast so you can hear from more guests that will benefit your business. Also, please check out our show notes page for more information on what we discussed on this episode. You can find it at buildertrend.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on The Building Code. Appreciate you.